today we're in a very special vehicle. It's a car that I've wanted to try for a long, long time. I haven't actually tried a Ferrari yet, so this is my first one I've got in the Driven Series. So this is a GTC 4 Lusso T, it's called. Uh, it's the V8 engine. There is also a V12. Now, um, yes, I'm dressed in golf gear. The reason is this car is one of those which is actually more of a grand tour for a Ferrari. Uh, it actually has space in the boot and it has a lot of space. So I thought, you know, what can I fit in a big boot like this? Uh, and I put my golf clubs in. I thought, well, if I'm going to put my golf clubs in, I might as well go play golf. So, uh, so here we are. So anyway, let's get this on the road and uh, see what this bad boy can do. My goodness, we are going to have some fun today. the GTC uh, for Lusso T. Now, the v, the one that came before this was the V12, and this is uh, actually the V8, and it's a turbo engine, uh, 3.9 litre, and and obviously the big thing, everyone's like, well, why is it called GTC for Lusso um, when, when it's only uh, two-wheel two drive? Now, the answer is that the GTC4, the four actually stands for four seats, and as you can see, it does have four seats just like the, the V12 version. But the V12 uh, GTC has a, the four-wheel drive model and hence it has control, great control in all weather situations. Um, and this one is a rear-wheel drive, so it has a different balance to it. So a lot of people were a bit unsure about this model's existence. Um, but I have to say, I have actually driven the, the V12 model. I drove that, had the pleasure of driving that one um, in Goodwood. Uh, and while it's a very different sound, it's, it's a bit more of the Ferrari wine, uh, whereas this one's a, a, like quite throaty in the V8, but uh, I have to say that I really enjoy this car, and th the main thing is, um, while yes, okay, it's not quite as powerful for the car enthusiast, but for the day-to-day -day drive, this is very, very, very good. still look let's say okay 0 to 60 on the v12 3.4 seconds 0 to 60 in this v8 3.5 seconds so you're not really losing a great deal of speed there okay the handling's a bit different not being the four-wheel drive but how many times are you going to be driving your ferrari in the peaks or on, on ice you know no one's really going to do that so for the day-to-day -day, it's more than adequate it's still very fast very throaty it's got all this the sport modes that the other model has so it's a much more manageable drive for me uh, as a day-to-day -day. and it's cheaper let's be honest entry price 200,000 for this uh, this one's specced up so it's about 255,000 so um, they're finding that actually a younger demographics buying this than normal Ferraris it's normally the kind of car that for a lot of people this would be their uh, first Ferrari whereas the people who would go for the V12 perhaps would have perhaps another couple of you know high high-end cars maybe like a Maserati you know quite supporter type car and then have this as a driver it's more the driver's family car but it's definitely a grand tourer i've actually drove this down from london very good very good drivers you know only a couple hundred miles but it, it showed me enough that it's very comfortable very steady for long drives so they've they've definitely nailed that objective and like i said earlier you know um the boot space incredible i've got my golf clubs in there so we're actually on the way now to the golf to the golf course so i can so i can actually play a bit of golf i mean why put the clubs in there and not play so yes, anyway, back to the car. Features wise, it's really interesting as well. So, um, a lot of cars, they have different, um, they have slightly different versions of the same thing, if I, if, so different types of clocks, etc. But I'm finding with this car, it has very specific uh, Ferrari features, which are perfect for this car. For example, the way you change the mode on the steering wheel, if I change to sport mode, on the steering wheel, very intuitive. Uh, then I put the suspension on. Everything's within close reach to the driving position, much more like a perform personal performance car, and everything changes throughout the transition. You can hear that already, complete change in the way it handles. Um, you do have to be very considerate about how you drive this car. Indicators, for example, I've never encountered this, but it's on the steering wheel, so you, you literally press the buttons on the steering wheel, or you can flick it from behind uh, to change to change gears, uh, to, change, um, to change direction, to indicate direction, but, uh, the shift paddle on the steering wheel, you can use, use it to take off and, and reverse, but I'll be honest, the automatic transition on sport mode especially is so intuitive, you don't find you need it uh, a lot of the times, and maybe occasionally to drop down if you want to push it, but in sport mode, it actively drops down anyway for you. 
on the passenger side, it has its own, its own hidden screen. I've not seen this before. We're above the glove box, which on that screen you can you can actively change the climate. You can you can um, add points of interest on the sat nav, so the driver doesn't have to look away from the road, and it'll instantly update it on his screen as well, uh, which is really really clever. Uh, even things from the way that even the key holder, the way it holds the key, it has its own specific little slot there, which just perches there. The only slight downside of that is if you're going fast and you brake hard or a bit too hard, it does fly out. But hey, maybe you shouldn't be driving quite that fast. But anyway, I won't, I won't go down that route. But interior as well, uh, having seen a lot of fries in the past and been inside them, you look at the interior, they're, they're, they're basically built around car driving, and as they should be, the driver's cars. But this interior is, is luxurious, it's sleek, a lot of leather. Uh, a lot of uh, features, a lot of the, you know, the big you know, touchscreen uh, display which control everything from uh, the, the, the really well sculpted, even the, the, you know, the AC ducts are, are very much in the mold of Ferrari, uh, very futuristic though, very clean, whereas compared to you know, the, the, the traditional more driver's cars, um, you, you can call them I suppose, uh, traditionally from Ferrari, the entries are quite simple really, Not, I wouldn't say basic but simple geared around driving and driving only. This is a car that you could actually live in for a long time, period of time. You could drive it long distance across Europe. Uh, it's a car to be taken places and it absolutely nails that. So how would I sum up the Ferrari GTC for Lusso T? First of all, let me just say this. It's, it's absolutely outstanding for Ferrari to have made a car that you can actually drive so long distance and in such comfort such style and even like I dare I say the fuel economy is not bad either I mean this is a car you could truly drive around on a day-to-day -day basis and still have a lot of fun if you wanted to you could take it on a track have a full Ferrari experience and that's remarkable but what I will say is there's a few things that because they've taken this step into the luxury realm uh, are a little bit um, not bad but interesting for example because the indicators are on the steering wheel on a roundabout or when you're fully turning the, locking the wheel and if you want to turn right it's quite awkward because you're going to having trying to reach around to press the button there and turn right it, it can be a little bit awkward but that's not the end of the world again small thing and another thing is um you know with the they've updated the infotainment and everything and it's fantastic don't get me wrong um but it still is there are quite a lot of buttons you have to click to get to certain features so uh you know when you're driving at speed which you want to do a lot in this car um, you would, it would be really handy to have uh, a steering wheel a controller to, to get to these features quickly. Don't get me wrong, they, are very, they have got a, a second screen in here which you can control again with a button to this side which will give you more technical information such as things like tyre pressure, um, uh, tyre temperature and you can get all the engine stats, how your car's performing, rev counter, all that from this side. But just from a purely on a day-to-day -day driver for the more normal people, which I think this car is kind of aimed towards if I'm being honest, um, yeah, those kind of features really help. But all in all, I mean, this car takes you from A to B and it gives you, it does it with a massive, massive smile on your face. So you can't ask much more than that. Anyway, time to get to the golf course, fast.